impromptu uh, Tattoo Now TV, which is a show that I host bi-weekly on the interwebs. Uh, Marcus, Leonard, and um, Russ Abbott were kind enough to join me for this. If you guys want to come up and listen, this is going to be pretty cool. We're going to touch on a, a few topics about tattooing. Welcome, Marcus. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Great. Doing so, good. Tell the folks a little bit about yourself. I am Marcus Leonard. I am from uh, Germany. Um, tattooing mostly Biomac, specializing in that, using uh, digital media to get to my designs. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. How about you, Russ? I'm Russ Abbott. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I've um, been tattooing since 1997. Specialize in illustrative tattooing, um, sometimes more realistic, sometimes more traditional. Um, also use digital media in my design process and uh, have fully exploited the, uh, the digital era in all aspects of my business. So, so we're going to talk a little bit about today. Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the, the digital age of tattooing, I suppose, the technology, right. how it's affected it, um, pros, cons. You guys both right. use Photoshop? I use Photoshop all the time. It's pretty much all I use, yeah. I haven't used paper in, I guess, like five years almost. What are the advantages? It's fast. It's fast. It's good for people that don't have patience like I have, you know? So, yeah, it's great. You just get to have a lot of iterations of the same design that you wouldn't get, like, if you have to do it on paper. So that's what I get out of it. Right. Um, I've been using Photoshop, you know, to edit my photos for portfolios and things like that for years. So, you know, when it came time to start designing tattoos in Photoshop, I already had a little bit of a, a head start. Um, but actually, I was inspired by Marcus in his use of the, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> in the, uh, the Cintiq, uh, the Wacom Cintiq tablet, where you can actually draw directly on the, the monitor. Basically, it's a display, but it's also a pressure-sensitive tablet. Um, the one we both have is the 24HD. It's this wide. It has an articulating yeah, it's big. mount. That it comes off the table, and you adjust the, um, the, the angle. Yeah. And you know, Photoshop is what Marcus uses. I use. Uh, We've got a little yeah, representation up here. Oh yeah, that's my setup. That's my old setup, actually. Yeah. So what actually is in the photo there? So yeah, I got like. Oh no, that's my that's my recent setup. I can't see it that well. So yeah, I got multiple screens that I work off of. Um, got like one or two screens for reference and controlling what I'm actually doing and one screen that I just use for whatever I need to procrastinate um, like internet, Facebook, music, whatever, movies <laughs> um, and that's how I work so I pretty much immerse myself in, uh, in my work environment for a couple of hours and uh, yeah it's pretty good it keeps you focused. That's a really impressive uh, setup. It's like an evil lair kind of. You're just surrounded yeah. by all these monitors. And it's like a tools. bat cave <laughs> yeah. a little bit, yeah. You just need one yeah. more step. You need to be able to plug yourself into it. You know, Ma I, Matrix style. I, yeah, I tried that, but that didn't, didn't work, work out too well. It. Nah. So uh, how are some other ways that technology has affected tattooing in general? Um, I mean, I think the obvious answer is things like MySpace first, allowing you know, tattooers to have easily accessible portfolios, you know, before that, those of us who were willing to put in the effort for websites and to get good ones were, um, had a little bit of an advantage over everyone else. Um, MySpace sort of leveled that playing field and then to Facebook and now Instagram is where we're all really spending a lot of time and, and we enjoy using that. So, um, you know, that environment is really changing the, the dynamic of how people look at tattoo artists and how they find out about styles. I mean, if you go back to maybe even 10 years ago, you know, an artist who's kind of a thought leader could go out and do a tattoo and then submit it to a magazine and then there would be a six month wait before anyone would see the magazine. And so it took longer for styles to get digested and regurgitated. Um, but now right. it's almost impossible to tell who thought of that weird way to draw, you know, an eye socket on a skull. Right. Before you see it, like, instantly. pop all over the world instantly. So. Oh, yeah, and you can control it yourself, what you put up there and how you yeah. want to be received. Yeah, you, if and you everything. want to keep something a secret for yourself and, and explore a style, you almost have to keep it off the Internet right. until you've done it ten times. 
and then you can kind of like let it go on the world and 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 then see you know, what see if back. it gets picked up or not yeah and I guess that's right. sort of a fun game to play yeah it's pretty exciting what's happening actually you know if you if you came up with myspace right myspace Facebook mm -hmm. now it's Instagram you know it's getting simpler and simpler and simpler so yeah. people it makes it easier for more and more people to not only put their shit out but also to to consume it yeah you know it's like only just like these little square right pictures for everybody right so and you and you can use the hashtags it's actually pretty cool because a lot of people are using the hashtags for this convention too like a hashtag tattoo gathering or hashtag to paradise tattoo gathering and um you kind of get to know a lot of people that you don't really see walking around all the time because you're working and you don't really uh, um, see what's going on so later on after the show i go on instagram and i check out that hashtag and see yeah. what's been going on all day and yeah it's, it's really cool, cool. like, like here at the show I finished a piece last night and I posted it to Instagram and as I'm walking through the, the hallway to the bathroom, everyone's like, man, I like it. Nice piece, man. Yeah, that's and awesome. like, I know they all saw it on Instagram. They didn't come by and see it in person. Right. Um, and you have those cool yeah. hashtags that enable people to find it really easily, right. you know. If, so people are using that. That's actually a pretty right. smart way of, you know, having this community on a completely different level other than just flesh and blood right here. Right. Which is pretty cool. Do you think... Uh, you know, because the internet has made everything so accessible all the time that it's uh, been a detriment at all, you know? Does it hurt? Yeah, there's always that fear, you know? It's, sure. It's, you, you want to kind of, like, keep what's yours and what you created a little bit. Like I said before about the idea of kind of, if, if I have a new concept, then maybe I want to keep it to myself a little bit until I've had time to explore it before, before it gets kind of gobbled up by exactly. other people. And, um, before you let it out in the world. Yeah, and it's yeah. all. There's always that sense, you know. Every every little technological change that happens, where you go, this it can't. How much crazier can it get? Like how much different can things change? And um, you know, I think it's just one of the exciting things about where, when we're living and when we're a part of tattooing. Yeah, a lot of that is very counterintuitive. I think, like where you're, you just don't know who's going to see that stuff, what is going to be done that w uh, with it. You don't know how many people are actually copying your stuff and. Just yeah. copying it straight off the internet. You just got to be fine with it, I think. It's a little bit of personal growth, actually, if right. you uh, learn how to be fine with just putting your stuff out there. And actually, you know, it's for free for everybody. So that was, I think, inconceived of, like, in, that was inconceivable or like 20 years ago that you can just advertise across the whole world and not even have to pay for it. And I think if... The only downside is that there's a couple of assholes who are just going to rip your shit right off. Um, you know, there's got to be that. So, yeah, it's inevitable. I can live with it. You know. Do you think it's given? Uh, do you think the internet's given you a farther reach for clients? Like you can pick and choose. Oh yeah. Better than you know before. Yeah, yeah clients are really starting to get the idea of a specialization from a tattooer. You know, and they're yeah. they're also used to the idea of traveling to get what they want from the specific person that does it. And, and if, if that's what tattooers are interested in doing, I think they can do that now more than ever, as yeah. long as they're in an accessible location. You know, it helps for me to be close to a major airport um, and to, to be in a city that, is, while it's not, Atlanta's not the most exciting city to visit, it's not the worst either, you know? Um, so we can keep someone busy for a couple of days if their wife comes and wants to go to the zoo or, you know, right. see the aquarium, all that stuff. So I feel like that's an advantage, but um, it's opened up. Well, it definitely enabled me to work out of my basement. Yeah, <laughs> in a cave in Berlin. In a cave in somewhere in close to Berlin. Yeah. And work on, like, mostly people that come from out of town, out of country, actually. And um, which, again, enables me to do a lot of work in a very short time frame because there's just this, uh, um, this dedication that you bring with you if you travel for that stuff, you know? And I think if I would work on a lot more people that come from around my neighborhood, I wouldn't want to work from my house, from my own basement, because I don't want to have people, you know, that come from just around the corner to know what, where I live and where I work and just come by and, you know, want to talk to me all the time about stuff, you know, talk about their next tattoo. So I'd rather just be far, far away and get, like, really concentrated time with my clients and uh, get a lot of stuff done and really makes it a very exciting concentrated experience and um, make a lot of memories basically it's cooler that way and you know all these social media has pretty much enabled me 
to do that way more than having my own website or mm -hmm. my own online portfolio or anything like that. I think uh, I get way more attention over Instagram or uh, Facebook than I do over my website. Even though I still direct people over my website to get into contact with me, um, I think all of those people pretty yeah. much. You also do videos too. You do some really awesome videos. Um, yeah, I use YouTube that. too. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I, with the work that I do, I think it's just better to see it in motion, mm -hmm. to actually see how it works because it wraps around mostly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it makes sense to put it in video and then use YouTube too. So, but all of that is linked together now. Yeah, pretty that's much. the best part is you yeah. can you can post on Instagram and upload to Flickr or to yeah, you can Facebook do or we use. Um, What's the blog? The Tumblr. Tumblr. Oh, yeah. you know? Tumblr is really neat because, you know, every artist in my shop can use their Instagram, but at the moment when they're about to post, they just hit Tumblr, and the only Tumblr that's programmed into their phone is the shop Tumblr. So shop Tumblr, without doing anything, becomes this portal to see everyone else from not just Russ Abbott, but Kelly Doty and Javier Rivera and right. Race Dillon, and Savannah and. Clint and everybody, you know, what, whatever they're doing on Instagram is all in one place when the shop's Tumblr. Yeah, it's pretty cool how easy it's gotten. It's, it just enables you to really focus on your stuff way more and make it better. Yeah. And, uh, you know, all this technology, you know, the more you actually embrace it, I think the more it can help you to be a better artist and just be, like, have a way simpler day and just, you know, have all this stuff out of your way that normally would just get on your nerves, like, I don't know, like keeping up with your calendar, keeping up with your all that money stuff, all your books, uh, all your bookings, and, and all yeah. that stuff. You know, everything uh, that, like that. That reminds me of the Square, the Square Reader, that people are using uh, the app with the the piece that you can swipe credit cards with. Yeah. Um, so that's changed everything for those of us who are on the road a lot and want to sell right. products with credit cards. Um, so that's worth mentioning. So like opposing that, that technology is making everything more complicated. I think it actually makes life a lot easier and lets when you it be, works. enables you to be a little bit more yeah, human. When it works. If it works and when if you it, understand yeah. it, if you actually want to wrap your head around it a little bit, yeah, then it can be a big help for sure. Anyone who's seen Tattoo Now TV in the past knows that technology can be a real bastard, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> We've definitely had some issues. Yeah, if it's getting too intricate, that's definitely not drawback, right? That's why it's nice that, that like the social media, you see it becomes simpler and simpler and simpler. And um, so, you know, the, the, the margin for error becomes just smaller and smaller and smaller, too. So it's a, it's a pretty good development. I think it goes in the right direction still, mm -hmm. you know? Even if it goes pretty fast, cool. and the internet allows you, you know, for reach to people. Like, for instance, your Kickstarter, mm -hmm. you had, you were able to reach, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people. Yeah. Um, so if I'm going to talk about Kickstarter, I got to explain from the beginning. Kickstarter.com is a crowdfunding platform that I recently used to fund this book project called Ornamental Archive, and I set out to raise what I thought was going to be enough money to get the book made. So I started out with the goal of $10,000 and um, made a video. You know, you always have to make a little video to explain what you want people to help you fund with Kickstarter. So that's the first step. Um, and, and just, you know, leading up to the actual launch, I used Instagram and Facebook quite a bit to just float little images of what I was working on and, and give people a chance to kind of get familiar with the idea that there was a book coming. And then about a week ahead of that, I um, made a, a few posts saying that I was going to put the project on Kickstarter. And I even promoted Kickstarter for a little while. I wanted my social media followers to get an idea of what Kickstarter was. And then when I finally dropped it, I ended up um, dropping it on my birthday because February 17th was also the day that a lot of people were going to be seeing my Facebook page because they were going to come by and tell me happy birthday. So That's a, that's a stroke that's genius smart. right there, man. That's yeah, I always slick, forget man. to mention that part. But um, so on my birthday, I had all kinds of stuff about the Kickstarter campaign going. Um, I had a lot of square images made with um, information as well as his photos, which is something I do a lot when I'm promoting seminars or whatever for Instagram. Um, you can't actually click on a link from Instagram. So when you have a really long um, URL, you can go back and put that URL in your Instagram profile as your website and then direct people to go to your profile. 
or you can uh, you know, just try to get an easy to remember URL. You know, a lot of times I would just tell people, go to Kickstarter, type Russ Abbott, right. and you'll find my project. So, All right, nice. So, um, you know, but the urgency of it is, I needed to raise ten thousand dollars, and I needed all of you guys to help me, and a lot of you guys did, and a lot of you guys reposted it and told your friends about it, and amazingly, I raised over ten thousand dollars in two days. So I still had twenty-eight more days to raise money, which meant that the project was going to, you know, get bigger and bigger and bigger, and now now I had the confidence to go ahead and and make bigger and better reward packages. I ended up um, selling a six thousand dollar tattoo of an ornamental tattoo through Kickstarter. Um, all told, I think I sold five tattoos through there. Oh. They were all inspired by ornament, um, which that was cool because, you know, if I have a concept for a tattoo I want to do, it's really sometimes hard to find the client that wants that without floating the image and letting everyone steal your idea. So right. um, using, uh, using Kickstarter to just say, I have a concept for something that's like this that I want to do. Is there anyone out there who's willing to help me? I had two guys fighting over it. Um, so I could have probably put another back piece up and done that too. Um, so in the whole course of the month, you can expect with your project um, to have a spike at the very beginning and then for everything to just sort of hit the bottom and you'll, you'll get two or three backers a day. And, and your strategy at that point needs to be, how am I gonna get these people back involved three weeks after they already heard about it? Um, and so you kind of have to launch it all over again and say, now it's almost over and it's definitely going to happen. So now you can have the book cheaper than everyone else is going to get it. You can get it signed. You can get the sticker. You can get the poster, the screen print. The yeah. um, We had this laser etched wooden skull. So all Still these waiting rewards, on my t-shirt, Russ. Yeah, you don't only, only have the project that you're creating. You have all the rewards associated with it. Yeah, it's very rewarding if you can actually help somebody out and you get something tangible back for it. Yeah, and people yeah. enjoy helping you know, they, they enjoy the process of being a part of the project. Yeah. Um, and the main advantage to it, other than having the, or being able to fund it without coming out of pocket, is that they're out there advertising for it. Oh, yeah, and you can probably do stuff that you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, Chet Czar just raised over $50,000 for an right. art show. Um, Crayola just raised, I think, $80,000 for a, um, a digital movie kind of project. Um, Alex Gray raised over $100,000 to support um, a new building for his artwork to live on for forever. Basically, he's building a museum for his artwork and he used Kickstarter to fund it. Right, it's pretty exciting. With Kickstarter, it's not like, you, you know, it's not like a bank loan. You get a bank loan, you get a chunk of money. You don't know if your project is gonna be successful or popular. With Kickstarter, you know already that it's popular because people have paid for it in advance right. and you can kind of know that it's yeah, going to be it can, successful. Yeah, it can really, I mean, funding any endeavor at a level over, you know, a few thousand dollars is hard for most people in the tattoo business. It would have been impossible for me. Um, you cannot go to a bank and just say, hey, I'm really awesome. I have a cool idea. Give me lots of money. They want to know that it's backed by something and they're going to be able to recoup their investment. Um, so your only option becomes you know, uh, an angel investor, you know, a rich uncle or someone like that who's willing to take a risk. Right. Um, but with crowdfunding, you divide all the risk up over hundreds of people and, and they're, they're all willing to take that on. And Kickstarter as a platform enables those backers to feel confident that they're not going to get ripped off. Yeah, plus tattooers are pretty much known for wanting to cut out a middleman. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's a pretty great medium for that kind yeah. of reason. No, of course, they alone. do take... Their, their cut too, you know, out oh, of $49,000 yeah, raised, I got 41000 and, um, you know, it, it seems like a lot, but, you know, and with all the shipping and rewards and everything I've had to produce, yeah, but you I don't have when to I make do the math, I'm going to be about even, but at least I can sell the book now, and, um, and hopefully there's still some people left that want to buy it. Cool. Right on. Well, we're going to shift gears a little bit. Um, I don't know if any of you guys caught the opening panel. We talked a little bit about access to um, the knowledge behind tattooing, um, webinars, TV shows, I mean, all that kind of stuff. And uh, we wanted to touch a little bit more upon that kind of, uh, that kind of topic. So how do you guys feel about the access to that information that, that's put out there? Okay, well, I mean, I just had a webinar um, go down with you guys about, what, a month and a half ago 
Um, I've been teaching seminars in person and live at events for several years, so um, for me, from the very beginning, I've always considered the, the problem of people who hadn't gone through a traditional apprenticeship or hadn't really taken the time to, to learn about tattooing using a seminar as a launch pad to just skip over a lot of hard work and, and proper instruction and things like cross-contamination, sterilization, all the, the scary parts of tattooing, um, not to mention the horrible tattooing that is possible without proper training. So I'm, I'm still a firm believer on a one-on-one on one experience with a mentor to get started. So what I try to do is I try to teach a, a, um, a subject matter that is more art-based and theory-based. Um, so not, I teach color theory. Not specifically technical, fundamental stuff you know, that you, you need know, to learn from an actual person. Yeah, there are a couple of times when the seminar might dive into to application a little bit here and there, but I'm never going to tell you, you know, this is how deep the needle goes. Right. This is what power setting you want your machine on. Um, you know, and, and so that's just not part of what I want to cover. And I feel like with that simple emission of early tattoo theory that I can freely, you know, give information to a more, you know, educated, you know, so a tattooer who's further along on their journey, even if it's an apprentice who, you know, has, has a mentor, I welcome them in, um, you know, and anyone from any experience level could, can maybe benefit. Um, so I, I feel okay about it. I'm fine with letting it go to a wide audience, you know, and, um, but I know you guys have other, other seminar presenters or webinar pre presenters who may be going into some of those topics that are a little bit more technical tattooing. Oh, and sure. I think you have, you guys have a plan for how to deal with that, right? It's not, it's not just like anyone can, can watch them, right? Yeah, the it's not just open to the general public, you know, and I'm not trying to turn this into an ad for webinars. I'm, we screen people for sure. And we make sure that they're attached to a shop. You have to be a professional tattooer. This is what we expect from tattoo suppliers as well. You know, if it's a reputable tattoo supplier, they will screen people that they don't know. You know, I, I get a call from Kingpin Tattoo Supply every few months when they're like, hey, so and so called dropped your name. Are they cool? You know, and that lets me know that they're actually doing that screening process. And I appreciate that because they've been selling my DVD that is a little bit instructional. Right. Um, along with a few other select suppliers who I always had to vet and make sure that they were putting people through a screening process. Yeah, if we see a shop, you know, if someone enters a shop that we don't know about, they're going to get a phone call. And yeah. we're going we're gonna to check every single one of them. Right. And, uh, I mean, if you, if you just put, um, if you just make webinars and seminars that basically don't go over the stuff that is supposed to be in a proper apprenticeship, Right. You know, you're pretty much on the safe side already. Um, I don't think that's really um, enabling anybody uh, to do something that they shouldn't be doing. Uh, because I don't think that those people would do it. They, they would do it anyways, you know, right. with or without the seminars. And if they're willing to, um, to spend that much money on, on wisdom uh, that they wouldn't get any other way, I don't know if that's really that that horrible, you know. I mean, a lot of I actually think it's interesting because how do we define scratcher? You know, that's the person we're trying to keep this information I mean, from. Dude, the way we define it is they're a yeah. person who doesn't care. You I know, mean, they're a lot just of tattooing and they don't care. So as soon as they care enough to take that that webinar, I almost right. feel like they no longer be, are a scratcher anymore. Right. I mean, and how many? Just someone who doesn't know yet what they're going to know soon. Yeah. Right. And how many of the people that are actually working here right now and are quite successful with what they're doing, didn't even go through the whole uh, apprenticeship uh, yeah. kind, of, kind of thing at all. They're self-taught people, high school dropouts, you hear that all the time. Yeah. And, and, and you know, it takes this dedication, you know, and it's sometimes, you know, the, 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 this whole mindset of most tattooers, I think, is like, they're not good with authority. They're idealists, they're... Um, they don't work well with other people sometimes, you know, so maybe they're not even cut out for the whole apprenticeship idea. So I think a lot of people might even, you know, pop up in this industry that really profit from this, you know, and bring a completely different mindset into tattooing without, uh, which I, th I think without those webinars and seminars, we would see a lot less of that happening, you know. I think it makes it more exciting. And, you know, the people that are going to, Going to uh, uh, um, going to use it for 
you know, just to get like a cheap way into the industry. I think they're going to find a really cheap way out of the industry too pretty soon. I mean, normally people like that don't really uh, stay in the game for a very long time, especially yeah. not if it's getting as busy as it is right now. And, you know, uh, being in a public eye as it is right now and quality going up steadily, I think the, the, the customers themselves, they really, it's a self-correcting process, you know. Uh, the quality goes up, the, the people notice that, and they don't, you know, there's always going to be people that are going to be happy to, to live with less or to live with a cheaper or shittier tattoo. Uh, I'm glad, I'm, I'm fine with that. I don't need to tattoo those people. I don't need their money, to be quite honest. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd rather have people who really uh, uh, are willing to give me some pristine skin and who are willing to pay me and willing to spend the time with me to, to actually do something that is going to stay with them for a long time. We're going to make them happy for a long time. Um, I'd rather have that, and you know, if, if if this system enables me and others to 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 have that, you know, then I don't see anything wrong with it. Yeah, Feels right. Well, I'm stepping away from the internet a little bit, what do you think about television? You know, we've all seen the shows. How do you how do you feel that is it affecting the industry? Does it does it matter? <laughs> you know? I've, I've it, accepted it, and uh, does, you does, know, does, I I watch. Plenty of tattoo reality TV shows. Yeah, you do. You're gonna I admit like that them. up on stage. <laughs> yeah. No, I watch them too. I can. Yeah. I don't watch any of them. Oh. I think it's a two-edged sword too. Um, I think it has its benefits. You know, like you get it into the public eye a little bit. You take the stigma out of it a little bit. You take the venom out of it, which enables people with a totally different mindset into the industry. And um, you know, I get a lot of customers lately that come in with no tattoos at all and they're getting something huge done like scientists like doctors mm -hmm. like people with an education that you they would usually have never found out seen. about it from TV no a I don't know times, if that right? I think no. it's just because it's so much in the public eye mm -hmm. um, the acceptance has gotten a, sure. w a lot yeah. more I don't think that those people are watching those shows I don't think that at all yeah. I just think that because a lot of people are watching it and a lot of people are talking about it and it, it's been in, 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 in uh, uh, public media, you know, any in internet and everywhere, that's just become way more accepted and that acceptance allows a lot of people that you would have never seen 20 years ago into this industry. They bring new ideas into it mm -hmm. and they bring uh, money into it too. Sure. You um, know? I have a, uh, an apprentice right now, she's 19 years old. So when Savannah was, I don't know, 13 years old, she saw Kat Von D on Miami Inc and you know, had a female role model that was a tattooer that inspired her all the way through high school to draw tattoo designs. I mean, I saw stuff she drew in like 10th grade that looked like it could have been done by someone who'd been tattooing for five years. Um, so I think it's really interesting how it's changing our, our culture. Yeah, and all of a sudden it's yeah. like it became a viable option for a future job, you know? It's, it's right. kind of crazy like that. that Actually, kids that are in school, what do you want to be? What do you want to be when you're older? I want to be a tattoo artist. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> right. That was never a possibility. No one ever thought that in the past. Like, no one was no. like, "Yeah, shit, I can make a living at this." Mm -hmm. That was way more. Yeah, it, you know, it was a little bit more magical, probably in the past. You know, but I think it's with all things. You know, with every industry and with every art form. You know, the more it, it, it's advancing and going through all these evolutionary steps, the more you lose that magic. It's like, it's like a human being, you know? When you're a child, everything is magic and everything is, is wonderful. And the, the older you get, the, the more you'll lose this magic and the more wisdom you will gain and the more you will able to actually do. And all that stuff is memory, you know? Right. And right now, I think tattooing might be in its adolescence. It's pretty loud, you know? It's pretty crowded. There's a lot of stuff. There's lots of ups and downs and a lot of... Uh, um, conflict and probably going to get a lot more calm in the in in coming couple of years, you right. know. We'll see. So a lot of these TV shows are obviously produced by non-tattooers trying to use tattooing to, to, you know, for commerce, try to make money off of tattooing. Right. How do you guys feel about non-tattooers in the tattoo community? I'm willing to accept um, a non-tattooer who seems to have their their head in the right place and their intentions, you know, in, in, in a positive way, you know, and, and I, don't, I don't think it's fair to judge every person who doesn't tattoo and say that they're not, um, that they don't meet a prerequisite to be involved in tattooing. 
um, but you know certainly have encountered people who um, didn't meet that you know but also I've met tattooers who didn't live up to the ideals that I'd like for people to live up to right. so I'm, I don't really know how you know actually putting pigment in skin does Absolutely. anything really to to legitimize a person and their intentions right I think you 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 get like with tattoo artists and tattooers you get a you get a couple of different characters that you'll always see over and over and over. And I think that's why we get along pretty well with each other. And then you have people that come from outside this industry into it, and they might bring a skill set that, you know, that builds up on the character that, that wouldn't even fit the normal tattoo artist at all. And we might actually profit from that. Like, yeah. you know, people that just bring knowledge into this business that we can exploit, actually. I mean, if you see it from, from that perspective. Right. Uh, uh, I get a lot of advice all the time from people who see the things that I'm doing, you know, and, and see like the seminars that I'm doing who are just like, you know, if they come from outside of tattooing completely, they'll suggest things that are like, there's no way I would ever do that. Right. I know from experience in tattooing, why certain types of activity on a business level would, you know, potentially be bad for tattooing, you know? Like, right. do I really want to help anyone build robot robots that do tattoos? You know, no. probably not. That that might Hell put us no. all out of a job. But there there might be a guy out there who thinks that's a great idea. You know, because maybe I could be tattooing you with like robotic hands, and you'd be in Australia getting the tattoo with your arm stuck in a machine. That's the terrifying and, idea. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's, that's possible. Are, I mean, yeah. they're already doing surgery like that. They've got the most finely tuned little servo motors, turning things like way better. Tiny little gadgets that are smaller than what humans can do, and it's revolutionizing surgery. Um, yep. There might be also money coming from places where we wouldn't even be able to finance, like the Kickstarter pro right. uh, programs. But you know, there might be stuff uh, where you have a sponsor that, that enables you to do something that you would otherwise not be able to do, like come out with a product that tattoo artists use, or, you know, to, this is becoming a real industry. Yeah, you know, there's there enough a lot, people a in lot this of people to, to make us. this a real industry and yeah. to, to, to come up with products that really you can make a lot of money off of. You right. know, and I don't mind if somebody, I don't want to spend the time to, to come up with a product and market it. I want to be tattooing. I want to be doing that stuff. That's what I want. That's why I got into this. Right. And I don't want to be uh, um, bogged down with, you know, I sometimes I have an idea about a cool product and I'm way too lazy to actually put that into work. No, you just know better. You know that exactly. your, your happiness derives from your artwork. Yeah. And, and it, 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 that comes into play a lot for me because I, tend to have like 20 or 30 great ideas that I could explore at any time and I actually have to just like tell myself no a lot more than anything. I, I bet a lot of tattooers are like that because we're just creative people that were, you know, you wake up every morning with a new crazy idea. Right. Um, Natural problem solvers, right? Yeah, exactly. But you can't really do anything with that. I'd rather tell that to somebody where I know there's that skill set. He can do that. She can do that. Yeah. You know, and let them run with it. I don't give a shit. Right. I don't need that money. I'd rather have the product. Yeah. Somebody make that for me, just so I can use it. Mm -hmm. You know, happy enough. Right. All right. So, say someone does make a product for tattooing, and they're not a tattooer. Do you have a problem with that? Well, if it's a good product, I don't really have that big of a problem with that. I mean, I'm 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 working with those Cheyenne machines, for example. Yeah. Those, okay. Yeah. Well, those people are not tattooers. Oh, I know. You know, so. No, I gotta be fine with that. It's a good product, you know. I, so I work with it. Um, if it works, it works. And if, if if it's a good product, yeah, I, I guess I gotta be fine with that. Sure. And everyone, you know, I mean, Russ, what's your opinion? I mean, it's. Um, I I think it's funny when I see products pop into the tattoo market that are so far off base as far as like the the branding and the imagery that they use to promote their product. You can always tell when they haven't really consulted tattooing right. and, they, and tribal, they just looked at tribal, us from the outside and made a thing it. and they're trying to like force it on us. You can always tell and if you can sense it and, and I make it a point to avoid those types of products. Um, I guess I'm really just sensitive to like what, what is the brand name that they're presenting to us? You know, does it, does it sound like a brand that I like? Does it look like packaging that I like? And I'm not going to sell your aftercare product in my shop if it doesn't meet the criteria of what I think looks cool. Um, so a lot of the folks that are out there thinking about making products for tattoos could, could really stand to involve tattooing or tattooers a little bit more in that process. And um, 
you know, so that definitely stands out. Um, I think, do, I, I, mean, I, think do I have a carte blanche problem with everyone who doesn't tattoo, you know, setting their sights on tattooing? Uh, I can't make a blanket statement like that. Tattooing has grown so much that it's almost, it's a cash grab for some people, you know, they just see a, I mean, it could be anything, it could even, it, it, we couldn't, even if it wasn't tattooing, if it was something else that was coming up and growing in an industry, they're going to just try to design a product, get some money and get out. Right. And there's definitely those people in tattooing. Websites, there's all kinds of silly websites that pop up where they're like, gonna, gonna help promote me, you know, like, right. but they don't, you can tell right away that they don't really know what they're doing and, and those websites quickly fail. It's, like, those, it's, it's like, like with those television shows, it's pretty much a, a two-edged sword. You know, you got stuff that's, that's going to work, and you, you got your drawbacks, of course. It's just like Facebook, it's just like everything else. It's got its drawbacks, and we just got to know if, if actually the, the positive stuff that we get out of it, if, if that's good enough for us to, to just swallow those drawbacks, you know, and just live with them. And, you know, so far, I think, you know, looking around, being here the last couple of days, this feels pretty good to me. You know, I think we're going into the right direction. I've, ne I've yet to see one shitty tattoo on this convention, you know? Yeah. You know, nobody, everybody is like super down to earth. Nobody sucks. Every, nobody has an attitude. We have know? the worst tattoo trophy over there because no one entered the contest. Because there aren't <laughs> any. <laughs> right. It's, it's right. Amazing. It's a shame. <laughs> Yeah, it's like almost like this whole contest idea doesn't make any sense anymore. Yeah, it's true. I mean, the, the tattooing that was going on here was so amazing that the judges were, it was just tense. And they just had to pick from these, it was, yeah. everyone has gotten so good that it just almost doesn't make sense to do that right. anymore. Yeah, no, I think that shows the character of the, the uh, promoters of this event. And, you know, and, and you can see contrast if you visit a lot of tattoo conventions, you know, talk about people that don't tattoo. This convention making is, products. Is, is, I mean, they make conventions all the time that are they're horrible. Yeah, um, the, the, I mean, Tattoo Now, we are not tattooers. Um, right. And we I put mean, this convention on. Yeah, you can focus on actually making this really, really yeah, good. Yeah, you know, we're, a, we're an office of computer nerds. You don't, you don't want to necessarily want someone who's focused on tattooing to be working on your computer, you know? Um, yeah, but you got, you got to bridge that gap where you're so much into tattooing that you actually want to do the right thing for us and not, you know, put yourself first, but put tattooing as an entity first. And um, I think this is working out pretty well. And, you know, as you can see, I mean, like I said, this is, this is a great event. I love being here. And it's pretty much the only tattoo convention I, I ever go to or work with. At. I don't do any tattoo conventions in Europe. You know, mm -hmm. I just pretty much only do this for that reason. It just works, you know, and I trust those people. There's so I guess no what you could take away from this is that it's not cut and dry, you know. No. Non-tattooers aren't always bad. They're not always good, you know. Right. It's, it's complicated. You can't, it can't be a hard line like that. It's got to be on an individual basis. And right. You can't just cut somebody out because they're not a tattooer. Nope, no tattoo. I mean, do you want your accountant to be a tattooer? Or do you want them to be an accountant? No, you have to take it like a tattoo. It's got to be individually looked at, right? And if you're a tattoo artist, you should be used to a process where you look at every problem that you have in front of you very individually. You just can't cut it all over. like. No. Yeah. Well, I've kept you guys both away from tattoos. Uh, do you have any, uh, any closing remarks you want to make to uh, the folks that are watching here? I don't know. Yeah, okay. All right, we pretty much all. covered it. Well, yeah, I, like I, think, I think so too, yeah, actually. I'd like to thank you guys for uh, coming thank up here you. and doing this. This is kind of impromptu. Uh, a lot of the topics, these guys are, just came up with stuff that they wanted to talk about. This wasn't our regular show at all, and I think you guys really made it a good little, little yeah, show for Thanks for springing this on me an hour ago. It was fun. <laughs> I really appreciate you uh, both taking a break from tattooing and, and helping me out. So, oh, Thanks all for right, having me. Thank guys. you. Marcus Leonard, Russ Abbott. Thanks for hanging out, guys.